Okay, this how-to video is going to talk about um, something called DFX that's now available inside Allegro and AllCAD PCB Editor. Um, this is a new function that allows you to effectively start looking at doing some design for manufacturing checks before you kind of send the board out or put it into another tool. So, you know, in many instances you may well send your, 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 your CAD data off to a fabricator. He would then come back and say maybe you've got some annular ring issues or some silk screen issues or some solder mask issues. Um, and then send it back to you and you'd have to make those changes and it, it kind of becomes a, it, it can be a delay in, in part of your manufacturing process. So. Um, Cadence have now added uh, a new functionality to the constraint manager. There's now a manufacturing tab. So obviously if we look at this board here, I've got a completed design. I'm kind of ready to go to, to manufacturing data. But so if I look at something like check the design status, I can see that all well, my status is, status is up to date. It's green. We're ready to kind of go. Um, so what we can do is we can start to look at this new manufacturing checks. So if we launch constraint manager, we now have a manufacturing tab. That basically allows you to set effectively a, a constraint set for outline checks so cut out an outline to different objects um, for the solder mask for an annular ring for some copper spacing so you can just clarify your copper spacings and then some silk screen checks so you can see obviously silk screen checks i've got a silk screen check defined already so anything on the silk screen i'm looking for like a point one clearance to to pins buyers etc um, and if we look at the layers, we'll go to the, the silk screen layers. So I've got a primary, which is my main part of the PCB. I've got my silk screen top and bottom options there defined. So the silk screen isn't as part of the stack up. Um, so if I go to analyze, analysis modes, design for fabrication, silk screen, I'm just going to turn all my silk screen checks on. We'll hit apply. And we've got some DRCs. So we'll just minimize this. Um, you can see I've got lots of DRC, DRCs here. So let's just simplify the display. And we'll go and look at our uh, silk screen top. And what I'll do is I'll turn on the design outline. I'm just going to turn on, um, let's just turn the, uh, the DRCs, the pins, and the vias. So we can start to see some, some DRC checks here. So if you start to look at this one, you can see I've got effectively my text is, is too close to a via and it's too close to a pin. So effectively, I'd have to come in and move the text. So we'll use the move command, make sure our fine filter just has text on, and then we can start to move the, the text out of the way. Uh, let's see if I can actually get this in without causing a DRC. It's quite tight, yet yeah, perfect, just about right. Um, so there's several instances of this, and you would have to go around and fix some of these. I've also got instances where my lines are crossing the via. So in this, this scenario, you might want to run something like the, um, the auto silk command, which would then clip this silk screen back for you automatically. But that's the basic principle of kind of the silk screen checks, which can be really helpful um, before you send this board out. If we go back, so we go back to the, the constraint manager again. So set up constraints. Um, I'm just going to disable that for now. So sorry, let's just uh, exit the command, go back to constraint manager. <coughs> and we will disable the silk screen checks. Let's have a look at um, annular ring checks. So. I'm going to turn my annual ring checks on. Hit apply. And OK. If I look, I've got an annular ring check basically of 0.2. So hold to pad and hold to via. Um, my annular ring is applied to effectively my all my layers. So I've got my primary, I've got the stiffener, and also um, a flexi stiffener. So the annular ring check is applied to all of those options. And I've got lots of DRC. So let's start to have a look at some of these. So we can come in here and look. Well, my annual ring there is, is currently set to 0.2 and I've got an actual value of 0 0.15, 0 0.15, I think in here, 0.148. Um, so looking at the IPC spec, actually probably my annular ring rule I've set of 0.2 is probably a little bit extreme here. So if we go back to constraint manager, what we can do is say, let's go to the rule of annular ring. Um, And what we'll do is we'll just change that rule. So if we go to the annual ring, instead of it being something like uh, 0.2, let's set that to 0.15. And we'll set this one to 0.14, because obviously the virus is slightly smaller. Where it, um, the actual RPC spec is 0.1, but um, we can be a little bit more generous here. And then if we just run an update DRC, we have uh, all the DRC errors have gone. Apart from obviously when I look at things like um, my mechanical hole. So you can see I've actually got a, a hole that is bigger than the pad. So in this type of scenario, we can just kind of ignore these. Or in here, I can potentially change the annular ring value to maybe 0.1 for the pins, hole to pin. 
because I've got a smaller value here, but the solder will flow around because I've got a, an oblong base pad. So maybe let's just drop that down to 0.1 and we'll do an update DRC. So that then just leaves us the mechanical pins in the design. So I'm not too worried about those. So we can then go to the constraint manager and we can either um, ignore those DRCs or we can waive those DRCs, or in this scenario, I'm literally just gonna turn the DRC mode off. So that's the angular ring checks. Uh, let's go and look at solder mask. So um, what we'll do is we will look at solder mask. So I actually need to go and create a, a rule. So let's show you how to create a rule. So I can click on create new. Um, let's just call this mask. Uh, it's a non etch based rule because it's uh, and then the rule I'm going to set is um, a solder mask. My slivers, uh, acceptable slivers can be 0.1 and my uh, islands can be 0.1 as well. If I then go to the mask layers, I can then effectively start to look at what I want to do. Now my mask is actually built as part of my stack up. If it wasn't, it would actually be in the not, up, not, not in stack up, but I'm just going to use my mask rule here for the primary part of the PCB and then I go to analyze analysis modes and I'm going to turn on my uh, my solder mask rules <clears throat> okay so if we go to the visibility pane let's actually look at our solder mask layers so solder mask top and we'll turn on the DRCs so we've got um, a few issues here with the solder mask, master mask, I've got a value of 0.1 and only 0.03, but, but I'm looking at this and saying, well, that's my drill hole. Let's have a look at my via pad size. Maybe I've got an issue with my via creation here. So what I can do is I can actually go tools, pad stack, modify design, pad stack, click on this and edit. Um, so I've got a 0.6 diameter and I'm 1.18. Okay, that's a bit large. So maybe if I take this down to make something like point, uh, so let's go to point, point 0.8. And then we'll just copy and paste that. And then if we do a file update to design and exit, and let's just do an update DRCs. So we've got a couple of instances um, where I potentially have to start sliding vias apart to resolve this mask, or I can make the mask the same size as the via. I mean, it kind of depends. I've also got a couple of issues here. Or maybe I've left some copper here. Um, so it will also work on the solder mask shapes. In this scenario, these are left from a previous revision, so we can actually just get rid of these shapes. Don't need those anymore. But sliding the vias apart, separating the vias um, would resolve a lot of these issues. Um, and that's kind of, you just have to work your way through uh, the mask checks. But doing it here, rather than doing it in a DFX tool, can save you a lot of time. There is also something called the Tools DRC Browser that allows me to kind of seal my design. So you can see here, I've got some design for fabrication checks. I've got solder mask. So I can look at islands. I can look at slivers. Um, you actually see all the values and you can sort all the values that you want. You can wave all these in one go if you're happy with them. So there's lots and lots of options here. There's also a DRC chart, which would show me the chart for the actual values or the relational values. So I can work my way around looking at the DRCs. And obviously this is a live link, so I can double click here and it would take me to where the DRC is on the screen. So some useful options for, for manufacturing and for finding and, and working your way through the DRCs on the board.